We have actually created 100 cultural centers so far in 100 Palestinian villages. And what we do actually is connect them with cultural organization. Let's say in Bombay you have this wonderful success story in here. And what we do with musicians, with writers, with photographers, we connect them to these architecture or these cultural organizations. So in most of those centers, we have created what I call spaces for change, really. Most important for us is when people start using these places. And here, you, I'll show you some of the photographs. For example, this was a, a children's center in which we have brought a woman from Tamer organization, and these people are specialized in encouraging reading. And this is one of my favorite, uh, you know, it's not really about these walls, because any architect, if you conserve one building, you know what is the mixture between lime and stone. It's no big, it's not, as I say, it's not a nuclear uh, science. But what is important, how to engage the population and how to bring these people to work. This is, for example, one of my favorite projects. This is a women's center in one of the villages. They said that the older women don't know what to do. And they needed a center for this older woman who came together and cooked and talked. And actually, also, there was a writing for younger people who would come and interview them about the history of this town. And these women felt good because first they have a center, and second they have, they, they have people coming and interviewing them about the history of this. Now, one of the most important things about Ruwak is publication. I always feel that public, you know, publishing books is important so people realize, because you know, if you come and say, I want to renovate this building, people cannot imagine the possibilities of those buildings. So all of these publications is about sharing with the audience what it means to have a Palestinian cultural heritage. So we have done a book on tiles, we have done a book on urban, village, uh, urban architecture, we have done on Palestinian village architecture, even agriculture, and here the caravan sarai. And we, we have collected so far uh, almost 15 uh, publications. And last uh, phase, is we started actually not working only with single buildings. We have started working with the whole village. We realize it's not enough to just renovate one building. We have from the National Registry of Historic Buildings in Palestine that I told you about, we realize we have 420 villages in Palestine. We don't have neither the person power nor the budget to renovate 420 villages. We looked at the National Register and discovered that if we save 50 villages in Palestine, we will be saving 50% of our cultural heritage. And that's why Riwak started in 2005 a project called the 50 Village Project, in which we improve the standard of living for the whole historic center. Actually, we don't go inside, we work outside, this is how the map looks like. Uh, without going into the politics of it, Palestine is very disconnected. So this is how the 50 Palestinian villages look, look like. But you know, with the rehabilitation of historic centers, we have decided that it is better to start with communal spaces. In other words, we improve the streets, we improve the infrastructure, we create spaces for children, especially playgrounds that they come around, and we create theaters and spaces where they can use the public spaces and they are upgraded in such a way that these spaces actually become better in the historic center than in the rest of the town, which means that a mother who wants to have her kids play in the street in a bicycle or even in um, a playground, now mothers and families started coming from outside the village into this. This is the village Birzeit, which is also the university. This is the one that has won us the Aga Khan Prize for the idea, but also for the concept of the 50 villages. And here is sharing with you how a place looked like. You know, when, when we brought the funder for this project, he gave us the money. Then when he visited the site, he said, Saad, I think I want to withdraw my money. 
And when uh, they came, this is the Swedish uh, Sida, when they came back, they could not believe their eyes how this community center has changed. So really, we architects, I think part of the problem with architects, we are very egocentric. We always think of our products. But for me, the most important training for young people when they come is to make this shift in our mind that we are creating spaces for cultural activities. And these are all spaces that now in the villages we start to see what is their power point, what is the point, you know, some people have crafts, some people have uh, okra, so we help them develop their own festival every year. One of them is at the apricot uh, festival, another one is the okra, I mean, they just, you know, have wonderful uh, little okras, so this is in one of them where the crafts is uh, uh, part of uh, So here you can see, uh, most important is with, we work with the School of Music. So we bring music, this is the Kamanjati group, which is in Ramallah. And now we have made centers, eight centers of music for them in the villages. So in the first photo, you see them teaching the kids photographs, uh, sorry, uh, music. Uh, here we have the School of Circus in Palestine. So we br bring the circus school into the villages. So in these centers, they are training the little kids how to make uh, a circus. And this is with Tamer, which is an organization for to encouraging the children to read more. So what we do is we connect them with, uh, with cultural organization. Uh, I'm going to stop here just to show you. Uh, this is Rewak team. Uh, this is our building. We are located in Ramallah. And here when uh, we were co-directors. And one of our major achievements actually is the communal breakfast that we eat together. Every, you know, I, my father was very British because we, Palestine, were, we were also under British mandate. So I remember when I was a little kid, my father said, the worst thing is for people to eat at work. How uncivilized, you know, people should be sitting home on a table and things like that. So when I, were, I came to Palestine in 81 and the employees wanted to eat to you know, eat during work. My first reaction was, dads, no, 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 we cannot. And actually, as time went by, I realized that the most important part of Rewak, if you ask me today, I would tell you, is the communal meal that we have together. Now, I ceased to be the director of Rewak two years ago, so I always claim that uh, the Arab Spring started in Rewak, passing the dictatorship, but peacefully. Because as you all know, the Arabs are known to stay in that seat for 42 days, uh, 42 years. I stayed 22 years, that's enough, so I passed it on. This is the Arab Spring in the promising Arab Spring at one point in Egypt. And these are the new directors of, uh, of uh, Rewak. Now, here start my writing. Uh, as I shared with you, I became a writer, and we'll talk more about it in a second. But this is Sharon and my mother-in-law. And actually, in the second one, you can see my mother-in-law and my husband with the hat. This is when they left Jaffa and uh, went to be refugees in Beirut. This is my mother-in-law and my husband. And this one, the second one with the blue, is my mother's family in Damascus. And this is my dog. We'll tell you more about my dog later, maybe if we have time. And I just want to share with you my philosophy in life, really. I, uh, people always are scared of age. But I must tell you that I feel the older I get, the more relaxed I am and the happier I am. In the Arab culture, this is how the diagram looks like. <laughs> You know, they teach you until you are 25 years and you keep going until 55 and when you reach 55, they're about to throw you in the garbage. That's it, you know. You're an old lady, you have to sit home and do nothing. But for me, this is my graph <laughs> in life, really. I have felt that since I became a writer at the age of 50, I have been enjoying life, and I think that just things, I always say I became writer at 50, and I want to be on stage 
So these are my dreams for the future. I want to act, maybe I become a musician, maybe in the Cirque, maybe I will be Pavarotti, I don't know. Thank you very much. Thank you, it works. Thank you.